Well, I hope everybody had a great Christmas. We do. We hope you had a wonderful Christmas. We hope you ate too much. And had a lot of pies and cakes and cookies. maybe some ice cream. Cookies. Cookies. Cookies, cookies. cookies yeah. are good. Yeah. We had pie. We had key lime pie as our dessert. And we also had the opportunity to go kayaking yesterday. We so did. We did. We got outside. It was great. We had a wonderful day, and we hope all of you did. Now, if you remember, last week we studied about the wise men. Mm -hmm. And this week, we're going to study about young Jesus. Like when he was a baby? No, not when he was a baby. It's gone ahead a few years. Okay. He's now 12 years old. Oh, okay, good, 12. And at 12, he was old enough to go to Jerusalem to celebrate Passover. And do you remember what Passover is? I do remember what Passover is. Passover was a time in Israel when one of the kings sought to kill all of the boys under two. And it was a power grab. It was a, a horrible, horrible thing. Terrible Pharaoh. He was a bad guy. He was a very bad guy. And um, so God protected the, the children of Israel by having the families mark their door frames with, with lamb's blood so that when the killing began, the, they marked their door frames with blood on the door frame and the death would pass over. The angel of death is referred to in the Bible. That's Bible. right. That's it, right. It would pass over anybody that had the blood of the lamb. That's right. That's right. So this was a Passover celebration um, because God delivered the Israelites from that horrible death for the um, of their children, and. Um, it, it continues to be a celebration that Jews celebrate today. So you'll see uh, groceries in the grocery store. Uh, matzah is the, the crackers are served at Passover. Um, and and to, again, to this day, it is a celebration. And that's what, what they were doing. Jesus' family was in Jerusalem. Right? In Jerusalem, yeah. And they were celebrating Passover. And it was a week-long event. It was. It was. And when you see the video, you'll see that the whole family, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, they had traveled to the Passover celebration, and they will actually be returning home from the Passover when they realize that Jesus is not with them. So that kind of brings us to our first point to pay attention to in the video and in the Bible reading, that when Jesus was found by Mary and Joseph, he was found to be in the temple. And Mary asked him, how could you do this? How could you worry us like this? And this is when Jesus said to, to Mary, did you not know that I must be in my father's house? Emphasizing that it makes sense for him to be in a temple because that's his father's house. And this is the first time in scripture that Jesus referring to God as his father is recorded. And we think this is the first time that Jesus actually had a conversation with his mother or dad about God, his father. Yeah. Talked to his earthly parents and was explaining, I don't think they fully understood the magnitude of, the, of Jesus, who he was and who he was to become as a man and uh, so Jesus gently is telling them mm -hmm. that his father is really God and both Joseph and Mary were were practicing Jewish people they were they were faithful they were faithful to God and they would have studied the Old Testament and they would have in their knowledge whether they connected it to Jesus or not they would have had knowledge of the Old Testament referring to a Savior being born, a Savior being born in Bethlehem, as Jesus was. And we saw those passages in Jeremiah, in Micah, in Isaiah a couple times, in Zechariah. 
And so this is, this is a time where the Old Testament has very strong connections or roots in the Old, te in the Old Testament. And they really are very specific references mm -hmm. because in Zechariah that uh, Julia just referred to, it clearly states that he would be portrayed by a friend right. and the money that the person would receive would be used to buy a potter's field. So throughout the Old Testament, the references to Jesus Christ the Savior and what he would do and what he would suffer is very clear for us to read and understand and be assured of. And then in, in the New Testament, or in the, in the stories that we read in the New Testament, that things had come to pass and things had been recorded in the New Testament that Mary might have been able to bring to mind. Um, in Luke, uh, Luke tells about the, a, the angel Gabriel telling Mary that her son would be called the Son of the Most High. And Elizabeth, her cousin, told Mary that she was expecting the great redeemer when she was just very early pregnant. Yeah. And angels had announced that Christ the Lord, meaning Christ, God the Messiah, they announced that to, to Simeon, a religious and a devout, a, a devout man. Who God had made a promise would see the redeemer before he died because he was very old. So these are that that Jesus considers God to be his father. It is the first conversation that we see about it in the scriptures. We don't really know if it took Joseph and Mary by surprise. No, we don't. But as you'll see in the video, he had gone missing from their eyes. He, they couldn't find him. And that, that concerned him. Yeah. So should we pray? Yes, let's okay. pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful celebration that we observe every, every year this, at this time. We know that in many people's homes the celebration is much different than it is in previous years because of the pandemic. And so Lord, you taught us how to be flexible, you taught us to be faithful, and we celebrated Jesus' birth regardless of how many people we were eating dinner with, regardless of how much we could or couldn't travel. And we did that, and, and as we do that, it makes that celebration feel a little different, but it's still so very, very special, maybe even more special this year. So we thank you for the message in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. We thank you for the opportunity to teach others about this, and we ask you to, have, to open our hearts to learn, to guide our words as we teach. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So let's read from the Bible. What are we reading from? We are reading from Luke chapter 2. We're starting in verse 39. Okay. So when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own city, to Nazareth. And what they're referring to is... the. Uh, when Jesus was eight days old, they performed circumcision on him. That all Jewish males went through that. And Christ put himself as a human and took human form. And so did all that was required of the Jewish male. And the child grew and became strong in spirit, filled with wisdom and the grace of God was upon him. Starting in 41 through 44, his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem according to the custom of the feast. When they'd finished the days, as they returned, the boy Jesus lingered behind in Jerusalem and Joseph and his mother did not know it. But supposing him to have been in the company of others, they went a day's journey and saw him among their relatives and acquaintances. Continuing in uh, verse 45 through 47, so when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem, seeking him. Now so it was that after three days they found him in the temple 
sitting in the midst of teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and his answers. So when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Look, your father and I have sought you anxiously. And he said to them, Why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? But they did not understand the statement which he spoke to them. Then in 51 and 52 we read, Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject to them. But his mother kept all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and favor with God and men. So when he, imagine him, you're God, and you're the son of God, and you have lowered yourself to mankind's level and you subject yourself and you obey your earthly parents. And that's what he did. Mm -hmm. Now, he had the power to do whatever he wanted to do, even at 12 years old. But he subject himself to his parents' will and followed their instructions. He even learned how to be a carpenter, which was his father's trade, his earthly father's trade. And at 12 years old, he was preparing his life to live his life as a man. He was not yet considered to be an adult, but he was well on his way, and he mm -hmm. still respected that, that it was there that he needed to be responsible for. Yeah, because he made these decisions. He made these decisions that he would lay down his life at the time creation took place. We see it all the way in Genesis 1. So, it's question time. Question and answer time. All right. I get to ask the question. Okay, I hope I give the right answers. Where did Jesus and his family go to celebrate the Passover? They went to Jerusalem. But are you sure? I am sure. Okay. I was less sure earlier, but I am sure now. <laughs> <laughs> so, think about the journey that Jesus and Mary and Joseph were taking. It would have been either on a, a horse drawn something, a, a ca um, maybe a camel, maybe. We don't know how they got there. Probably oxen. There, there could be oxen. And, and we, also, we also, it's reasonable to believe that they walked. That we know that they were traveling with, with others. And um, it was a long trip, regardless of how they got there. But they, it was a celebration. They were going to be with other people. They were going to to celebrate the Passover. There would be there would be like we see at Christmas time. We don't know exactly what it would have looked like, but we can assume there would have been eating. There would have been lots and lots of conversations going on. People would see each other that they hadn't seen for a while. And because Passover was one of the most important festivals or feast for the Jewish people. Well, how long did the celebration last? Seven days. Seven days. That's a whole week. The, a party going on all week long, seeing your cousins, seeing people you hadn't seen. They traveled together. It was kind of a, a tradition, like our traditions. And it was specific to Passover. Um, COVID has changed a little bit about how we celebrated Thanksgiving and Christmas. But it's still a very special time. And this it, it is that kind of special time that this Passover what gave us a time is our immediate family to be together True. and to celebrate the birth of Christ. Yeah. Now, they have left Jerusalem. They've been on traveling for a day. We don't know how many miles they went. And they realize that Jesus is not amongst the group. Right, he's, and he's we missing. don't know how large the group is either, but I bet it was 30, 40, 50 people. Could have been more. Uh, so they couldn't find them in the traveling group, so they go back to Jerusalem, and they spend two days. So if we take one day traveling, two days searching, that's three days. Does that remind us of Easter? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Jesus wasn't lost. Jesus knew where he was. He knew why, why he was there. 
he wasn't he wasn't lost but to his parents he didn't they didn't know where he was and they didn't know if he was in danger um, and I think I think it's easy enough for us to kind of imagine how they must have felt sure yeah, yeah. I know how I always felt if my if I got separated from my kids um, so I he, he wasn't worried no, but, but it's easy to imagine how they were. Oh, certainly. How did Jesus respond to his mother's statement about being worried? He tells her that he doesn't really know why he's ask, she's asking that. That he was in his father's house doing his father's work. And that um, it, it was just a very simple answer. I think he's preparing her for what lies ahead mm -hmm. when he starts his ministry. Mm -hmm. And this is just the beginning mm -hmm. of that. How did Jesus show his obedience to his Father? Now we're talking to his Heavenly Father. He said and he did what his Father commanded he do, asked him to do. And in, in this story, he didn't act according to what would have been typical behavior after a feast, meaning he didn't go back to the town that they lived in with his family. Instead, he stayed behind in the temple. So he wasn't even staying behind to play games with other 12-year-olds. He no. went to, to the temple, which is a place of deep learning, conversations, teaching, and, and scholarly people. Um, priests even who were very very much experts in the in the Old Testament and Jesus stayed not behaving like a 12 year old might but he stayed to discuss scripture in the temple and he he did so he was called to do so by his father in heaven and it would be highly unusual in this period in biblical days for a 12 year old to sit with uh, the older men mm -hmm. and discuss the uh, Old Testament mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and be able to discuss it at a level equal to these learned men. So why did, uh, what made Jesus stand out from the rest of the 12 year olds running around Jerusalem. Well, Jesus would have stood out not only from the rest of the 12 year olds, but from, from everyone. His deep devotion to God. The Bible doesn't tell us in this passage, but it must have been apparent that he lived a life that was completely in keeping with God's direction. Well, we do know that he uh, he returns with his earthly parents, and as we said earlier, he stays with them, mm -hmm. he obeys them, mm -hmm. he learns their trade. He is the only one that's ever lived a sinless life. Mm -hmm. So in all things, even as a young child, he was sinless. Mm -hmm. It's hard for us to imagine that. Uh, Can we do that? with great difficulty well, <laughs> we, we can accept what the Bible tells us and I believe it a hundred percent but it's hard to imagine what it would be never to have sinned I don't know that it's really I can only speak for myself but I don't I, I can't I, I try to be perfect and I'm not very good at that I think we both fall into that category. And I've never really, I've met lots of people who are very strong Christians, who are fine, fine people who try and be kind and do the right thing. And they too would tell me that they can't quite figure out how to be perfect. And that's because we weren't made to be perfect. We, we are, we, we have a relationship with God that is based on his understanding that we, we won't be perfect. And Jesus later in his life from the story, will decide to make it possible, in spite of the fact that we're sinners, to have a deep relationship with God. Well, I think in this story we see some key elements. We, 
we read about the blood of the lamb mm -hmm. being spread on the door for Passover. Mm -hmm. We see that uh, Jesus' earthly parents took a total of three days to find him. There, there are. And, that, and that reminds us of Easter, mm -hmm. his death and burial and resurrection. So I think this story that we read in and God put it in the Bible where we would start having an understanding and a great confidence as we go forward for the next several months and study about Jesus' life. And we can always use Jesus' life as an example. And we can try to do and say only what God wants us to do, just like Jesus did. All right. Well... Thank you for joining us this morning. Indeed. Again, we hope you have a happy holiday. We will speak to you in uh, 2021. Next time we talk to you, it's going to be 2021. That's we will right. bring in a new year. And we all have great hopes for 2021 that um, many things like, like a pandemic are behind us at that time. But in the meantime, we miss you. We hope you're doing well. We hope you're enjoying a little break from school and from work, possibly. And we look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye-bye. Right. Bye. -bye. Bye.